Welcome to our reflections for this week. I hope and pray that you know that God is with us and that Jesus prays for each one of us all the time. Over the past 10 weeks, we have been reflecting on various themes connected with prayer. This week, Martin Fair is leading our reflections by focusing on a prayer of Jesus that we find in John's Gospel. In this prayer, we have an insight into the relationship that exists between Jesus and his Father. Our reading for today is John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. John 17, verses 6 to 19. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Amen. Let the church never be an escape from the world and from all its challenges. How could we think that it might be when Jesus in his prayer specifically says, My prayer is not that you take them, that is his followers, out of the world. So if not out of the world, then very certainly in it, in all of its complexity and confusion, corruption and chaos, in its weariness and wanting, its waiting and wilting, and in its wonder and joy, its blessings and delights. Yes, the life of the Christian, the one who would follow in the way of Jesus, is to live in the world, this world. To never be afraid of getting our hands dirty or to imagine that our calling means that we've to keep ourselves apart from the lepers and tax collectors and sinners of our day. We have a gospel to proclaim, as the old hymn puts it. There's good news for the poor to announce and to enact. 
there's the whole business of sight to the blind, liberty to the captives, and jubilee. And I'm guessing that to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly require of us that we be in the world where people are. Each morning I use the Lectio 365 devotional app and the closing prayer each day says this. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. I can't do any of that if I'm removed from the real life of the world. That's where we're meant to be, in the world. But for as long as life is in the world, Jesus prays for us. And the whole of John chapter 17 is given over to such a prayer. Friends, I really hope you'll let that truth sink in and not skip by it. Because here's the thing, as Jesus prayed for that first group of his followers, so he still prays for us now. The 20th verse of the chapter says as much, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray for those who will believe in them through their message. That's us. And in the letter to the Hebrews, it's put this way, that Jesus lives forever to intercede with God on our behalf. Us, his children, his followers. Can you just let that sink in for a moment? That Jesus is at the Father's side praying for you. Right now, without ceasing, in your situation, in the circumstances you're wrestling with right now, Jesus is praying for you according to your needs and knowing these better than you yourself do. Doesn't that fill you with a deep and comforting sense of peace that Jesus is praying for you as he did for his first followers? But see that specifically Jesus prays for two things. Firstly, that the Father would keep us safe from the evil one. And secondly, that we might be sanctified. Look, folks, I'm not sure what you make of this kind of language, whether it be the evil one or the devil or Satan or whatever. Of course, some want to dismiss it altogether. Superstitious nonsense belonging to a bygone age when people believed pretty much anything and everything. If that's you, let me point you to C.S. Lewis's The Scrutate Letters, a warning against dismissal. And yes, C.S. Lewis, one of the great philosophical minds of the 20th century, always worth listening to. I think of it this way. If there is an up, there is a down. If there is warm, then there's cold. If there is in, then there is out. If there is good, then there is evil. If there is love, there is hatred. If there is light, then there is darkness. It seems to me then not to be a ridiculous leap that those of us who acknowledge God would at the same time recognise the reality of the evil one of whom Jesus spoke of in the prayer. But let's strike the right balance here. I was once in a Bible study group and a member of the group confessed that she often fell asleep while reading the Bible and it was the devil to blame. She was asked, when do you do your Bible reading? To which she replied, late at night, once I've gone to bed. It was then gently pointed out to her that maybe she was falling asleep because she was overly tired 
and that reading the Bible early in the day might be more profitable. Let's be on our guard against the evil one, as Peter's first epistle advises. But let's not blame the evil one for all that that which is our responsibility. Well, for me, I'm going to hold on to Jesus' prayer that he prays for protection from the evil one. And the second part of what Jesus prays, that we be sanctified as we are sent into and are living in the world. One of my favourite bands in my late teens was the Glasgow outfit Simple Minds. One of their hits was a song called Sanctify Yourself. Can you do that? Can you sanctify yourself? Jesus prays that the Father would sanctify us by the truth of his word. The meaning, I think, is this, that we be holy. Now, it's a crying shame that the word holy has become pretty much an insult. Be that as it may, the meaning of it is that we be different, that we be prepared to march to a different drumbeat, that we be ready to choose the right thing when it might not be the most popular option, that we, we, we be willing to choose the path less travelled. And that alternative, often counter-cultural way, is shaped by the truth of the Father's word. Jesus prayed, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So to be sanctified, to be a follower of Jesus in the world, where we're called to be, is to live a life shaped by the word of the Father. Or we might say, is to look at Jesus' life and say, Lord, by your amazing grace, help me to live that way. As Jesus gave thanks for his first followers, he did so saying, For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. Brothers and sisters, as Jesus prays for us, even now, let it be that he will be praying, as he did for Peter and Andrew and James and John and Thomas and Philip and Nathaniel and Mary, and Martha and Mary, and Joanna and Susanna. Father, I gave them your word, and they accepted it. Let it be so. Amen. Shall we pray? Loving God, we give you thanks for all you have done for us. We give you thanks that you have adopted us as your precious children, that we now belong to your family and are greatly loved by you. We come remembering the blessings we have received from you and the support that you have given us throughout the years. We also remember that we are called to be in the world and to share your good news with those we know. Lord Jesus, we are full of grateful appreciation for all that you have done for us. You were born into our broken world in order to heal it. You died in our broken world in order to forgive it. You were raised to life in our broken world in order to breathe life into it. Therefore, because we have believed in you, our friend and saviour, may we do all we can to share this good news in our world. Help us to do so through our words and actions. Help us to act justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you. Gracious Lord, because we are still in the world, wrestling with all the issues we face each day, we are so grateful 
that you pray for us each and every day, that you intercede for us because your love and care for us is so great. Therefore, as you pray by your Father's side, we echo your words that the Father would keep us safe from the evil one and that we would be sanctified. Jesus set us apart and help us to be holy and to walk the path less travelled. Father, we know the depth of your love. We know how vast your grace and mercy are. We know how endless your patience is. And we come asking for forgiveness, for peace from the sins of our life. Father, please be with those who are ill at this time, whether they are at home or in hospital. Please be with those who mourn the loss of someone they loved. Please look after those who feel isolated and find themselves without anyone to turn to. Help all those in need to know your presence with them and a real sense of your love at this time. Father, we do indeed give thanks that Jesus prays for us in each of our many challenges in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are now going to sing our hymn for this week, which is Rejoice, the Lord is King. Rejoice, the Lord is King. sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Savior, reigns, the God of truth and Stains he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail. He rules over and hell. The king.
So as we seek to live in the world, let us find reassurance from the fact that Jesus is always praying for us. And until we meet again, take care, stay safe, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.